Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about something that exists in a lot of unionized workplaces. Relative to people who have similar political views to me, I tend to be a little bit more skeptical of unions, and there's a specific thing that I've seen in unionized workplaces that I really don't like. And this, I've seen it both when I've been working for a large employer that is unionized, and I've seen it sort of from the outside, for example, in school systems where there's a teacher's union and I'm the student in the school system. And what I see that I don't like is that there's often this system of seniority in place. So these unionized workplaces will negotiate a union contract, and the contracts are pretty complicated. But in the contract, there is this system of seniority spelled out, so that over time, as people stay with the employer longer and longer, they get certain additional benefits. So the three things that I see come up most frequently is that people who've been there longer tend to have higher pay, so that's usually written into the union contract, that the pay goes up over time. And the pay increases can be substantial, so they get higher pay. The second thing, they tend to have more job security. Now, union contracts typically spell out conditions for when and how you can fire people, and they typically make it very hard to fire people. But most people in union, unionized workplaces, because it's hard to fire people, they're not losing their jobs because of getting fired for doing something bad, they're losing their jobs because of layoffs. So when there are budget constraints, and the management either is forced to scale back, or they want to scale back and choose to lay people off, whether or not it's forced, typically, because of the union contract, it's the people who have worked there the least amount of time who get laid off. So that's the second thing. The people who have worked there longer tend to have more job security. What's the third thing that I see? The third thing is that the people who have worked there longer usually get a pick of easier jobs. And this is often explicitly spelled out. For example, in a bus system, you typically have this concept of a pick, where there are these different bus, bus routes, and in order of seniority, the operators go in and they get to choose which run they want to drive. So, uh, the desirable runs get taken first. Now, the desirable runs can include both ones that are easy, and ones that pay more. So there's some drivers who just go for the really high paying route, which might be like a night shift, a swing shift, some shift that people don't really want to take, so the union contract spells out that it pays more. Uh, but the other thing, uh, a lot of times it's just they're going for the easy runs, the easy pleasant things. And you see this same sort of pattern playing out in police forces. For example, like, new officers are typically put out on the street, whereas as they get more senior, they often move into the office and get sort of higher status work that's like a little more cushy. You know, you're not placed at risk, you're not having to deal with difficult situations on a daily basis. And, okay, I really dislike all three of these things. So, the, the three things we have here is that there's a higher pay as you get older, there's higher job security as you stay there longer, and there's your job gets easier. And why don't I like these things? First of all, there often can be a big disconnect between your performance in these jobs and your pay when you're in a unionized job. And if your pay goes up on the basis of a formula, there's not much incentive for you to do the best job that you can do. And this has been my experience in these situations. Some people do a great job, and they're really committed, and some people don't. But because of this union contract and these constraints, the employer can't do anything about it. They can't promote the people who are doing a better job. They can't recognize them. They can't give them a higher salary even if they're contributing more to the functioning of the organization. Like, some, some employees might be doing things to cut costs, and it's saving a lot of money for the organization, but they don't get any financial, uh, any financial resources 
as a, as like appreciation of that, and that bothers me. Okay, so there's this this thing of people not really getting compensated and recognized for what they're doing. The second thing, though, is it's really hard on the people who start off. So, for example, one unionized workplace, uh, most police departments, New York City, look up the starting salary of a police officer there. I don't know what it is now, but I looked it up a number of years, years back, and it was in the 30,000s. And this is in New York City. Like, you can't possibly live in New York City with that kind of salary. It is crazy. And over time, as you work your way up, you'll start making more. But like, okay, it can be really hard on the new people. And what I think is even harder is often the lack of job security. This is an issue facing many of my friends who start out teaching in public school districts, because the public school districts are mostly or almost exclusively unionized. So teachers, they go in, and, and also school districts are often subject to cuts and layoffs, so it's really common for a teacher to go in one or two years and suddenly, bam, they're out. They lose their job. Whereas the people who've been there longer have a lot of job security. Now, I don't necessarily think it's totally problematic to have your job security increase as you get older and as you stay there longer, but there are a lot of teachers in there who are not really working as hard as these new, new teachers, and the new teachers are often really busting their butts. And because they can be easily laid off, a lot of them are really afraid of losing their jobs. And so the administration will kind of harass them, be really, really hard on them, whereas the teachers who've been there for longer, especially when they have tenure, they can get away with really crazy stuff that most people wouldn't be able to get away with. Like, basically, the, the few people I know who've gotten fired, it's usually because of something horrible like having sex with a student who's under 18. I mean, like, awful stuff like that. Not just that they're being lazy, they're not doing a good job in the classroom, they're sort of being unfair to the students, like, those types of things won't get you fired. And this really bothers me. So there's this disparity in power right there, and the new people who tend to be young people right out of college, they tend to be financially in a rough situation to begin with, they're the people who get the short end of the stick. Okay, so what's this last, last element of it? Well, the last element is the nature of your work and sort of picking the easier jobs. So this is more of an issue in some workplaces than others. But basically this comes down to the same thing that I said right at the beginning, like people aren't being, that they're not working in a way that's more efficient for the organization as a whole. Different people are going to be better at different tasks. And when you're talking about like police officers, some people are going to be better on the street, some people are going to be better in the office. And as you get older, you don't necessarily get better in the office. There might be some newly hired cops who might really be at their best working in the office. But they're not doing that, because that's not the way the system works. And similarly, there might be some older ones who really are just at their best when they're out there, and they're not as good in the office but they move into that because it's, it's a more pleasant job, so they pick that job. Um, same thing with bus drivers. Like, some people are, are better at certain types of things than others, and like, you see it in performance of like, uh, things like people's accident rates, absences, stuff like that, complaints about a driver. Um, so, so when people are allowed to pick routes as they get older, it doesn't necessarily lead to the most efficient operation of the organization as a whole. So, what's the solution to these things? I honestly don't know. Um, it's complicated. Um, I just don't really like the setup as is, and I want us to start talking about it. And I would like to see, especially people who are really gung-ho on unions, like if you're like, yay, labor unions, yay, unionize, if you want to convince me that unionizing is a good idea, you need to propose some ways to address these problems. And especially, how are we going to make it so that the union system isn't so hard on the young people? I think that's a really important question to ask. If you're someone who's like, all about unions, throw it out there. What's your idea? How can we address these problems? Because I don't see unions doing it. I would rather 
take other methods in society to address these problems. This is only the beginning of it. I could, I could tell you more things that I don't like about unions, but I think this video is long enough. Um, yeah, I'd love to hear from you. Are you someone who supports unions and do you have a way to address these concerns? I want to hear it. Um, do, you, do you agree with me and do you not like unions? I don't know. I want to hear from you regardless of what your viewpoint is. Yeah, thank you.